Chapter 23. Horse Bad. Destructive Explosives Good. After flipping the page of the book he was reading, Haldir reflected on how nice and peaceful the house was. It had to have been the thousandth time he had thought such, but he was enjoying the peace so much that it was hard to not be constantly reminding himself of how lovely it was. He was not exactly sure who he had to thank for it. It had probably been a couple different people. Not that it really mattered to Haldir who had done it, but that it had been done. He had needed the break. Those first two months that he had been there were as close as it got to having a nightmare in the middle of a dream. Everything was wonderful, as good as a person could possibly wish, except for one thing. And that thing was, of course, none other than Sauron. It seemed like he was bound and determined to twist every little thing that Haldir might have otherwise enjoyed. Well, it more than just seemed that way. Haldir knew on good authority that it was such. Heck, Sauron had only told him so himself. While a certain pattern had existed in that time, it had not been a very pleasant pattern. Sauron would do something and Haldir would figure out some way to retaliate. Elhith would stand by and just observe. There had been, of course, a few occasions when they had gotten along amazingly well to the surprise of everybody, including themselves, but those had been very rare. Most of the time they had just acted like four-year-olds and insisted on pestering each other in hopes that one would break eventually. Then, a few days after it had reached the two-month mark since they had been there, right when Haldir was thinking that he might just like to break and get it all over with, Yanwei had come. Sauron was to go and spend some time away. Where away, Haldir had no clue. So long as it was away from him, he could not have cared less. Sauron had cared a bit, though. Evidently, he had an idea of where he would be going, and didn't like it at all. Not that he liked much anyways, but he seemed to loathe this even more than most things. Yanwei had simply laughed at him for a minute or so, and then forced him out the door without any further ado. And that had been the end of that. So for the last fourteen months or so, Haldir had been free. He'd taken the time and gotten used to the new environment. By now, he had Quenya down and he had blended in with everybody else to the highest point possible. All things considered, life was good. At times, he even forgot why he'd gotten out of Mandos. A week ago, however, he had been reminded. Sauron had finally finished his rounds or whatever for the next couple of decades and would be coming back soon. Ever since then, Haldir had been trying to gear himself up. It had been so long since he had been sarcastic or anything, which had typically been his nature. He thought that it would probably take a while to get back into it again. At that moment, there conveniently was a knock on the door, which jolted Haldir from his thoughts. He groaned inwardly and looked over at Elhith, who was once again in the kitchen having to cook a meal. Haldir still hadn't been able to figure it out, try as he might. It could have had something to do with the fact that he was always afraid to risk even making an attempt after that last episode. When Elhith just shrugged in a way that said that there was nothing that he could do about it, Haldir finally got up and went to the door to open it. He was not too surprised to see Sauron there. Yep, he was back. Great. Well? Sauron demanded, frowning at him. Let me in. I live here too. Without any more ceremony than that, he came in, tossing a couple saddlebags at the bottom of the stairs. Haldir just stood, looking at him for a minute as he proceeded down the hall to the kitchen. He followed after him, and found that he had already made himself quite at home, which wasn't really that remarkable since, as he had pointed out, he did live there. Only he hadn't for over a year. Apparently, that was of no consequence, though. Sauron sighed and leaned back in the couch, stretching his legs out in front of him. I hate horses, he muttered as he closed his eyes. Abominable creatures. You had to ride one back here? Haldir asked. Yes, the whole cursed day. He opened his eyes for a moment and looked at Haldir. The whole cursed day. How many hours straight? Too many, something like eight, I'm guessing. Haldir snorted. That was really wise. I forgot, okay? I think I've ridden a horse an amount that you could count on your fingers, and none of them are recent enough for me to recollect. You always seem to learn the hard way, Haldir pointed out. 
I do, don't I? He admitted. Going to do anything about it? Can't. It's just part of my nature. Ugh, I am so sore. Sauron complained, pressing the heel of his hands against his eyes. Did I mention that I hate horses? Yes, in fact, you did. Okay, good. I just want that to be clear. You're going to end up walking everywhere, you know. I don't care. Horses are evil. Haldir smirked at this. What are you smiling about? Sauron snapped at him. I was just thinking that if horses are evil, that you should get along well with them. He replied. What, because I'm evil? Haldir nodded. Well, you know, evil is only an opinion. See, to me, I would say that horses are evil because they make me miserable, and anything that makes me miserable must be evil. Therefore, I would say that the Valar should be there too. So, horses and the Valar. Now, I wouldn't go so far as to call you evil, but you are an annoyance. Then I would say that I was good, because everything I do is right by my standards. This is by the terminology that you would use, of course. That made absolutely no sense. You are wanting to be good now or something? Sauron shook his head. No. See, you use evil to describe things which contradict what you think is right. Horses contradict what I think is right, therefore they are evil. Your logic is so full of holes that if it was a boat, it would sink. Speaking of boats, water is evil too. Stupid Olmo. Anyways, it does too make sense. You're just too dense to figure it out. I had thought that by now Valinor would have worked enough on you that you'd be a bit more discerning than you were before. Guess not. I get what you're saying. It just isn't applicable, since the word evil was pretty much made specially for the endeavors of your master and yourself. Sighing, Sauron began to crack his fingers. <sighs> I'm not going to get into this right now. I'm so tired that I can hardly think straight. Maybe that's why nothing you are saying makes much sense. Or maybe not, he replied, lacking a better comeback at the moment. At this time, Haldir began to think a little. How long had Sauron been back? All of five minutes, maybe? And they were already getting into these stupid picking conversations? So much for peace. Sauron seemed to get over this very quickly and went off on something else, although this was much easier to reply to than the topic before. Do I smell food? He asked. Probably. Elhith was making dinner, I believe. Still haven't learned to cook. Sauron scoffed at him. Haldir narrowed his eyes. No, have you? Of course not. I hope you weren't meaning for that to be an insult then, because the only way it would work would involve you receiving it also. Doesn't matter, he said as he got up. He grimaced slightly when he did this. It seemed that it was not any kind of joke that he had been writing way too long. Are you going to need medicine or something? Haldir asked, watching Sauron wince at just about every step he took. No, I just need a new pair of legs. And back, too, probably. Elhith is the remedy-savvy one. I'm sure he has something that would help and be a bit less drastic. Sauron grunted, but did not say anything. Where were you that made it take so long to get back? Haldir asked as they walked slowly to the kitchen. In the mountains, way out there he said, gesturing vaguely off to his left. What were you doing there? Quarrying, he replied succinctly. Sounds like fun. Not really. It was probably the least so of everything I've done while I was gone. Hard manual labor is just about everything that I dislike rolled into one. Maybe it should be added to my list of things which are evil. By this time, he had gotten to the kitchen and sat down in a chair, displaying a you-can-serve-me-now look on his face. Elhith looked over at him briefly. Back again? Sauron nodded. Looks that way, doesn't it? Learn anything? Morals, perhaps? Sauron snorted. <laughs> morals? I think I have plenty of morals. 
Did you learn any good morals, then? Oh, we're getting into that good evil thing again, are we? Should I rephrase it as, did you learn our morals, then? Sauron nodded. That would be better. All right, did you learn our morals? I learned them, yes. Took them to heart, no. Figures, Haldir put in. Did anyone ask you for your opinion? No, but I gave it anyways, didn't I? Haldir retorted. Well, next time keep it to yourself. Nobody cares. And that is supposed to deter me how? Sauron sighed angrily. Ah, now the reason why I liked being all alone so much comes back. There wasn't anybody around to backtalk. Except yourself, which seems to be somebody you enjoy talking to. Dinner, then. Alith broke in, stopping them before they could really get started. They glared at each other for a moment and then began to eat in silence. Elhith looked completely unbothered and smiled pretty much through the whole meal. Then again, he was probably getting immune to the arguments and had expected them to be a part of the routine. Once the meal was over, Haldir helped Elhith clean everything up while Sauron remained in his seat. Haldir normally would have nagged him about this, but since he looked like he was trying to psych himself up to simply get out of the chair, he decided just to let him be. After a bit, coincidentally when the meal had finally been picked up, Sauron managed to stumble up out of the chair. Haldir couldn't resist smirking at the use of some various phrases, all of which included the word horse that followed this action. Elhith, however, who seemed to hold no grudge against anybody and treated everybody with the same amount of attention, looked up from drying a plate. What's that about horses? he asked. He hates them, Haldir answered. Sauron glared at him, which wasn't something spectacular, pretty much seemed like he had such an expression on all the time. Haldir decided that he'd have to figure out a word for it. Glare didn't just cut it anymore. Why don't you like horses? Elhith continued. Because riding one made him sore. I'm perfectly capable of answering questions that are directed to me without your help, Haldir. Sauron said crossly. Then speak up quicker. Surprisingly, there was no remark to this last comment, and Elhith was left to fill in the gap. Would you like anything? I would like many more things than you could possibly offer. Would you like anything so that you aren't sore then? Am I going to need to make sure that I'm always being very specific? Yes, and yes. Come with me then, I'm sure that I have something. Come with you where? Upstairs. Oh. Uh... Sauron began, frowning. Going to have to go up sometime or another, so it might as well be now. Haldir, you can carry his stuff up for him. Haldir was going to object to this, not necessarily because he felt like being contradictory, but because Sauron looked over him and smirked in such a way to make it obvious that he'd like to have Haldir's pride smashed around a bit. However, before he could say anything, Elhith spoke again. Just carry them, and Sauron? He said, looking right at him as he pointed and jeered silently at Haldir. You be nice, too. Not waiting for any arguments, Elhith set the plate down and went to the stairs. The other two came along a bit slower, Haldir because he didn't really want to help Sauron out, and Sauron because he couldn't just move very quickly at the moment. At the bottom of the stairs, Haldir picked up the bags. There were five. For a second, he thought about letting Sauron go on first while he picked them up, then decided that considering the pace he was going at, being behind did not seem very satisfactory. Having decided this, he hurried up, not really caring if the bags bumped into the stairs, or more like ran into them hard. However, after the very first time they smacked nicely into one step, Sauron yelled at him. Can you at least show some amount of care for my things? Why would I ever do that? Because I asked? Hmm. Elhith jumped in once again. He was becoming quite the mediator. Haldir, don't be difficult. You're not setting a good example. The instant after he said this, Haldir and Sauron agreed on something, although indirectly. They both objected to Elhith's words, even if it was for different reasons. My example is better than what he acts like any day! Haldir exclaimed. I don't need anybody trying to set examples for me! Sauron said at the same time. Elhith sighed. Well, you are both wrong. 
Haldir, you were expected to get him to stop acting this way rather than keep him in a cycle where it is better for him if he continues being a complete snit. Sauron looked a bit unsure about whether to take that as a compliment or an insult. So you need to at least try not to act like a snit yourself, otherwise he'll be able to condone what he says by saying that you do it too. And Sauron, apparently you do need an example because the way you act now is not the way you should act. I think you are underestimating how decently well behaved I've been. Sauron said, sounding almost a bit put out. Really? Well, you're more than welcome to prove me wrong. I believe that the worst thing that I've done the whole time I've been here was stealing that jewelry back when. Or, wait. He trailed off and frowned a bit, pausing at the third step. Actually, I did attempt to make some minor explosives while I had been doing forging. They hadn't really worked like I wanted them to, though. Elheth shook his head sadly, but Haldir was a bit interested. He hadn't heard that one word before. Explosives? He said slowly, not sure about the word. Yes, explosives. Sauron said, looking over at him as he finally started to come up the stairs again. What are they? You don't know, he asked incredulously. No. I thought I had used those on Morian before, when I was hiding out in Dol Guldur. He mused. You sure you don't know about them? They are often used in fireworks. Maybe that rings more of a bell? Fireworks? Oh, those things Mithrandir makes? Haldir said, wondering if he was getting closer to figuring it out. Sauron scowled a bit at this. Yes, that horrible! He rattled off for a minute, one in which Haldir wasn't about to interrupt him. Presently, though, Sauron seemed to become aware that Haldir was still expecting some sort of answer. Well, yes, he makes them too, but he knows I made them first. The expression on his face now was as close to a pout as was possible without really being a pout. You made fireworks, then? I did, a long time ago. Like, a long time ago. Then I changed a couple things around in them, and made just explosives. Those were more interesting. Which do... They blow up. I gathered that. Well, you put this powder in some container, usually of metal. Then there is a fuse which you light. And when the fire reaches the powder, it goes BOOM! Elhith tripped on the top stair when Sauron screamed out this last word. Sauron snorted, smiling slightly. That reaction is what I loved about things blowing up, he said, a very reminiscent tone about his voice. Yeah. So yes, see, I'd make these things and I'd have the orcs take them out to battle with them to huck at you guys and stuff. Then you'd all blow up into thousands of little pieces. Only... The orcs really didn't get the hang of the concept for a while, and consequently would keep it a bit too long, and make themselves blow up into thousands of little pieces. They figured it out eventually. That was more information than I was really going for, but that's okay. It's so hard to tell how much you want to know sometimes. Or always. It isn't really how much you tell, it's what you tell. Oh. Besides that, though, I am a little interested in how you got the idea in the first place, he said as he finally got to the top of the stairs. Bit of a funny story, actually, Sauron said with a wry smile. A funny story, really? Now, is this one that I would find funny, or one that just your warped humor finds funny? It would probably be funnier to you than it is to me, and it was not even funny to me for a long time. Care to share, then? Haldir asked. Sure, why not? Sauron replied. Sauron's story time. Lovely. Sauron paused. Don't ever say that again. Haldir shrugged. Where to start? He pondered. Well, in any case, I always had a... Mm, obsession with fire, putting it gently. You don't say... Haldir said sarcastically. I never tried to keep it secret, Sauron shot back. Anyways, I don't have any idea how I figured it out, 
but somewhere down the line I made fireworks, though they were junk to begin with. I got there eventually, but then this one time I tried something really weird with one. Honestly, I have no idea what I was thinking. So I tried to send this one off once, only it did not work well, and only went up about ten feet before falling down again. Haldir raised a brow at this. Well, go on. While it did not go up very much, it went a ways. Sauron reflected, as though trying to find something good in a bad situation. Unfortunately, it happened to go right into Yavanna's favorite part of the garden and blew about a fourth of it up. Haldir instantly smiled. Really? Yup, and so that is how I figured out the basics of destructive explosives. It also happened to be around that time that I learned about gardening. Before then, Haldir had been laughing softly. However, now he just did so outright. <laughs> what? He asked, controlling his laughs long enough to speak. Obviously, Yavanna wasn't very happy with me. Well, yeah, she was downright mad. Outlay managed to smooth it over a bit, yet to make up for it, I had to go and help her fix everything. It was useful after a while, though. I used a lot of it in planning out the crops that I made my slaves farm. Sometimes it's interesting what things will come in handy later down the road. There is just something very wrong with you going around and planting flowers, you know that? Hey, it wasn't just flowers. He said in defense. Being part of the Ainur, I didn't plant just flowers, okay? Give me a little credit here. Okay, sorry that I lessened your horticultural abilities. Forgive me. He said, smiling. I said you'd find it funny. I was right, wasn't I? Yes, you were. That was quite amusing. I think it was that incident which sparked my like of destruction. I didn't do anything about it for a while, however. That's... nice, Haldir said, unsure of any fitting response. Helheth had gone off to his room to rummage around for the medicine, and now they had finally reached Sauron's room at the end of the hall. Haldir went in and set the bags down on the bed. Interestingly, the cover gave off a small cloud of dust as a result. Sauron blinked at this and then looked at Haldir. You guys have not been in here at all, have you? No. <sighs> That's great. Well, for one thing, you told us not to, Haldir pointed out. I did. That's right. I didn't mean it literally, though. <sighs> I don't suppose you have any more sheets or something so that I'm not just sleeping in dust. Caring about something's condition now? It's contagious. What can I say? Fine. Haldir grumbled as he went out to find the asked for sheets. By the time he got back, Elheth had apparently found what he had been looking for, and had given it to Sauron, who was downing the small vial of only Elhith knew what. When he was finished, Elhith went off again, and Haldir tossed the sheets to Sauron. Catching them, he frowned. I have to do it. Yes, I went and got them. I'm sure you are capable of putting them on the bed. Sauron sighed. <sighs> it's so good to be home. Oh, and we're so glad you're back. For a moment, he waited for the imminent retort, yet there was none. He turned back and found Sauron merely smiling cheesily. I'm sure you are, considering how many lovely plans I have for future excursions. Now good night, Haldir. Although left with this less than encouraging thought, Haldir did not see anything else he could really do about the matter at the time other than sleep. Might not do much to keep Sauron from formulating his plans, but it'd keep Haldir from falling asleep while he tried to go pull them off.